Blades Whaler. Blades Whaler is an Ortsgemeinde municipality belonging to a Verbandsgemeinde, a kind of collective municipality in the Birkenfeld district in Rhineland Palatinate, Germany. It belongs to the Verbandsgemeinde of Baumholder, whose seat is in the like named town. Geography, geography, geography. Location. Blades Whaler lies near the state boundary with the Saarland, roughly 3 km southeast of Hopstadt in Weyerspach and 9 km west of Bonholder. The municipal area measures 3.2 km2, of which 30% is wooded. Constituent communities Also belonging to Lates Whaler is the outlying homestead of Lindenhof. Municipality's name Lates Whaler was founded in the 8th or 9th century by nobility. At that time, all the places ending in Whaler were founded as a result of the growth in population. In Lates Whaler's case, the leading syllable would give a clue as to the founder's name. It was likely Liu Doin, for this was a very common name in the early Middle Ages. History In 1440, Lates Whaler belonged to the county of Veldens, and the counts of Dijon held it as a fief. This time is recalled in Lates Whaler's civic coat of arms. A lion in the upper half of the escutcheon is drawn from the arms formerly borne by the counts of Veldens. Lates Whaler older forms of the name were Lates Whaler. Lates Whaler or Lates Whaler was certainly very small at this time, not so much a village as a farm, and with few inhabitants. In 1444, the tiny center passed by inheritance to Stephen, Count Palatine of Simmerns Weybrook and later passing to his second. In 1533, the lords of Oberstein were enfiefed with Lates Whaler, along with Metwaler, Thorin, and Linden. A 1539 agreement between the Obrant of Lichtenberg and the lords of Oberstein set forth clearly that authority in civil, personal, and practical matters lay with the Duchy of Palatinate's Weybrucken. The lordship of Oberstein, however, did not hold with the arrangement very long, for it was out of force by 1559, and thereafter Lates Whaler was a fief held by the lordship of Wartenstein. At first, the lordship comprised Lates Whaler, Hambach, Weyerspach, Namborn, L. Whaler, and Bladerdingen. Near the last named place stood the Wartensteiner Schloss, the lordship's seat. In 1570, Lates Whaler burnt down utterly, although, by 1587, Lates Whaler der Hofhof means farm in German once again boasted four houses. In 1620, a new agreement between Palatinate Zweibrucken and Wartenstein came into force. This one set forth that authority in civil, personal, and practical matters lay with the lordship of Wartenstein, but high jurisdiction was reserved to Palatinate Swaybrucken. Among other things dealt within the agreement was the question of appearances at the weekly market in Bonholder by the villagers of Lates Whaler. These were compulsory, and failure to show up there on market day was punished, even if the villagers were bound to do compulsory labor in Wartenstein that same day. The new agreement rectified this, and after it came into force, Failure to appear at Baumholder Market was no longer punishable as long as a Wartenstein official could show a certificate indicating that there was compulsory labor to be done that day. The Thirty Years were 1618-1648 brought plundering, devastation, and destruction to Lates Whaler and its surrounding area. In their wake came hunger and sickness and the resulting unending decimation of the population. In 1635, Lates Whaler and Hainbach burnt down utterly. According to one account, people from Lates Whaler fled to Castle Birkenfeld. It was 1664 before there were once again inhabitants in either Lates Whaler or Hainbach to each. The man in Lates Whaler, according to an oft told story, was not even German, but rather a French soldier named Whirl, and indeed, the first families listed in the Hopstedt and Weyerspach family book with the surname world were all in Lates Whaler. Since then, the name has spread, so that there is now hardly a village in the local area in which the name world is not amply represented. The new village that sprang up after the Thirty Years' War was built on Lates Whaler's current site, but the village had thereby shifted its location somewhat from where the old one had been.
It is believed that the old late whaler lay some 100 or 200 in Nirahame Batch. In 1667, Lorraine finally managed to gain control over the lordship of Wartenstein, thus ending the centuries-long squabbles with Oberstein or Palatinate Zweibrucken. Under Lorraine, late Whaler was grouped into the upper end of Schomburg. The last lord of Castle Wartenstein died in 1745. In the years that followed 1748 to 1754, his offspring sold the lordship to Holy Abbey, which thus acquired the tithing rights. Moreover, the Abbey exercised low jurisdiction, while high jurisdiction, as had been so before, lay with the Duke of Lorraine. Appeals, therefore, had to be heard in Lorraine's capital, Nancy. In 1766, the last Duke of Lorraine died, and France came into the Duke's inheritance. Only a few years later, though the Duke of Zweibrucken brokered a deal with France whereby Zweibrucken traded certain places in Alsace for the villages of Friesen, Heimbach, Weyersbach, Bladerdingen, and Leitzweiler. The Duke thereby managed to fill some of the territorial gaps in his holdings in 1783. In November 1792, three years after the French Revolution, French revolutionary troops descended on the Leitzweiler area. The French burnt Late Swaler down, but this might have been a case of mistaken identity. It seems that the French soldiers were to have burnt Eitz Whaler, another village a few kilometers away, today a constituent community of Friesen in the Saarland. To offset Late Swaler's loss, Eitz Whaler was ordered to deliver to Late Swaler Oakwood so that the mistakenly burnt village could rise from its ashes. This, however, was not what Late Swaler got. Instead, who would deliver to the village was Ash, which was not as popular as Oak, for house boars found it quite appetizing. With the Treaty of Campo Formio, in October 1797, the Rhine's left bank was ceded to France. All lordly holdings were seized by the state and French law was imposed. Late Swaler was part of the Department of Saar and in the canton of Birkenfeld. The French campaign went further, putting an end to the thousand-year-old Holy Roman Empire in 1806. It was only in 1813 that Napoleon actually suffered a decisive defeat in the Battle of Leipzig, the Battle of the Nations, which sent the French army fleeing to Paris, with the Prussians right behind them all the way. The Rhine's left bank was thus freed of French rule, and by a treaty concluded in May 1814, it was placed under a joint Imperial Royal Austrian and Royal Bavarian State Administrative Commission Landesverwaltungs Commission. Leitzweiler lay in the Birkenfeld district in the canton of Baumholder, in the Amtsbezirk of Berschweiler. Representatives from Europe's powers gathered in 1814 and 1815 at the Congress of Vienna to decide the continent's political shape in the post-Napoleonic era. In April 1815, great parts of the now leaderless lands out of which the French had been driven past to Prussia. The newly formed cantons of St. Wendel, Grumbach, and Baumholder, within which lay late Swaler were, however, given by the concluding act of the Congress to the Duchy of saxe coburg salfeld as compensation for having helped the Allies in the Napoleonic Wars. In September 1816, saxe coburg took charge of its new territory with its 25,000 souls and area of 8.25 square miles. Beginning in 1819, this territory, which went by the name Principality of Lichtenberg, had its seat of government in St. Wendel. Meanwhile, Weyersbach, which lay and still lies to late Whalers north, was, along with great parts of today's Birkenfeld district, assigned to the Principality of Birkenfeld, an exclave of the Grand Duchy of Oldenburg, most of whose territory was in what is now northwest Germany, with a coastline on the North Sea. Leitzweiler thereby became a border village between these two principalities. In 1832, the Hambach Festival was held, attended by 20,000 people, who demonstrated for freedom, democracy, and national unity. At the same time, Riots broke out in St. Wendel, leading the Duke to decide to sell the Principality of Lichtenberg to Prussia. The agreed price was 2,100,000 thaler, and thus, in 1834, Leitzweiler remained a border village, 
but now in Prussian territory, while the Weyersbach side was, as it had been before, the Principality of Birkenfeld in the Grand Duchy of Oldenburg. Prussia grouped the new acquisition as the St. Wendel district into the Regierungsbezirk of Trier. Even today, an old border stone stands as a reminder of this time. The great stone bears the letters KP for Königreich Priusen Kingdom of Prussia on the late Zweiler side and go for Grosser's Ogdom Oldenburg Grand Duchy of Oldenburg on the Weyersbach side. As a result of Germany's defeat in the First World War and the subsequent 1919 Treaty of Versailles, the St. Wendel district was split. 26 of the 94 municipalities within it were grouped into the Saar, a League of Nations mandate. Leitzweiler was excluded from this session by a couple of kilometers, and thence a fourth formed along with the other 67 excluded municipalities the Riskreis St. Wendel Bonholder, with the first syllable of Riskreis having the same meaning as in English in the sense of leftover. The leftover district's seat was in Bonholder. Oldenburg and Prussia still existed in one form or another right through imperial and Weimar times, but the Third Reich put an end to the former in 1937 by merging it with the latter. Together with the Risk craze, a new Prussian Birkenfeld district was established, to which Leitzweiler belongs to this day. Prussia itself was abolished as any kind of political entity after the Second World War with the onset of Allied occupation. Since 1946, Leitzweiler has been part of the then newly founded state of Rhineland Palatinate. Ecclesiastically, Leitzweiler was long part of the Catholic parish of Bladerdingen. Until 1932, Leitzweiler's dead were even buried in Bladerdingen. Only then did Leitzweiler get its own graveyard. In 1947, the municipality was transferred from the parish of Bladerdingen to the parish of Rockweiler. The inhabitants undertook a campaign to collect signatures, but to no avail. Many villagers registered their protest by attending church in Bladerdingen. Some even went to Hambach. Population development. The following table shows late Zwaler's population figures for selected dates since 1609. Politics, six, six, politics, six, politics, politics. Municipal Council, Council. The Council is made up of six Council members who were elected by majority vote at the municipal election held on 7 June 2009 and the Honorary Mayor as Chairman. Mayor, Late Swaler's Mayor is Andreas Theodore Wurl. Coat of Arms, the German blazon reads, in Getheltem Child Oben in Silver Ein Blauer. Rochesunter und Bewayeter Waxender Low, Unten in Blau ein Goldin, Offrich Stehend Ragen Garb. The municipality's arms might in English heraldic language be described thus Profess Argent a Demelian Azure Armed and Lang Gules, and Azure a Garb of Rior. The lion is a reference to the village's former allegiance to the county of Veldens. The Rai Chief Garb of Rai symbolizes the village's former agricultural character. It may be worth noting, though, that nowadays there is not even one farmer in late Swaler. Economy and infrastructure, transport, road. Late Swaler can be reached on the Autobahn 62 Kaiserslautern Trier through either the Friesen or the Birkenfeld interchange. Rail, wool. The nearest railway station is Hambach where almost all trains that call are region Albon services. Regular rail connections, however, are available at Hopstadt and Weyersbach in the outlying center of Newbrook. Air Frankfurt Hahn Airport is roughly an hour's drive away. The next nearest airport is Saarbrücken Airport.